Our final of three Road to the Derby videos for this week. We have a, a interesting race here. We're going to Turfway Park on the synthetic for the Jeff Ruby Stakes. Um, I know I'm not a big synthetic player. I don't know about you, Caleb, but this is an opportunity. It's always fun when these races come up because you see horses coming from Sam Houston and Tampa. It's a lot of turf horses having an opportunity here to go run on the dirt in the Derby. Never really made sense to me, but hey, it's an opportunity here. And, and this this race drew quite a field. Um, and there's an opportunity for a horse to possibly get some points and, and make it in Turkey. So we have a field of 12 with one also eligible, going one and one eighth of a mile on the synthetic at Turfway Park. Um, this is a grade three with points available for the Derby. I'll start us off here with the one Royal Spirit. One Royal Spirit was a little bit interesting to me. I think that the horse, uh, if this race was on turf, I would definitely bet this horse. Um, I don't necessarily love the post draw, the inside, especially the one hole has been dead. It's not been that great. Uh, the rail's been pretty dead at, at Turfway, and the outside bias has actually picked up as of late. Horse is going to need a dream trip from here, um, especially because it's not going to be able to lead. It's going to be probably four or five off. Uh, not a horse I'm necessarily going to use on top, but I'm going to throw it underneath probably in third in my tries because I think this horse has shown what it can do on turf, and we'll see how it translates over to synthetic. What did you think of the two and the three, Stolen Base and Cabo Spirit, two of the horses we should see in the mix here? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I'm with you in that I'm not a huge uh, synthetic player here. Never uh, truly understood the 100 points given to this race, but it is a fun race and it's a very competitive race. So I think the number two stolen base, uh, this was the horse that I liked in the uh, Bataglia Memorial Stakes last time out. And he ran a great race, just barely missed to the favorite by a neck to Tis the Bomb that day. This is a horse that is probably going to be very, very far back early and look to make one big run. That's the way he's had most of his success. It is interesting to see that Mike Maker adds the blinkers here today. So perhaps we're looking to get this horse involved a little bit earlier, which I think would be uh, certainly to his advantage. But yeah, this is a horse that I think is a, is a player in this race for sure. I mean, was barely beaten a neck to Tis the Bomb last out, who is your favorite in this race today and a deserving favorite at that. So I think that Stolen Base makes a lot of sense and Corrala stays on board and you know, he's excellent at this turfway track. So yeah, I think Stolen Base is a very logical contender in a race that feels pretty open. The number three, Cabo Spirit. Uh, this was a horse that uh, is one of those horses that I kind of look at as one of the horses that maybe caught some derby fever. Uh, horse didn't do much over dirt to start his career. They switched him to turf. And he's been a very nice turf horse out there in California, picking up a couple of nice wins at Santa Anita and Del Mar. Uh, came back with a, a pretty decent graded stakes effort uh, in the, around a mile in the Del Mar turf. And they then decided to try to get this horse pointed to the Kentucky Derby. And that didn't exactly go to plan. Uh, he was a very distant second to uh, Messier and RB Lewis, then came back in the San Felipe and uh, really didn't run a step that day where Forbidden Kingdom sort of ran that field to the ground. Uh, clearly, this is not a dirt horse. It remains to be seen if he's a synthetic horse. He, he does like the turf. Generally, that translates well as a synthetic but we haven't seen it yet, so I'm not sure that we know. I find it a bit curious that they didn't put this horse in the uh, El Camino Real and instead decided to ship him across the country to Turfway here. But uh, nevertheless, this is a horse that his turf form is good, although the figures do seem a little bit light compared to some others in this field. Uh, probably not a horse I'm gonna really wanna bet shipping across the country and trying something new, but uh, is a horse that, you know, if you like his turf form, has a right to take a step forward here. That takes us to number four, Rich Strike. So what do you think there, Andrew? Yeah, Rich Strike uh, lost the stolen base and tis the bomb four weeks back. Nice fourth place finish. Nothing really to take away from it. Um, but the horse is a dead nut closer who's got on a massive, massive closing bias that day. Um, and I think that's what really carried it. I, I think bias is really uh, – more they don't uh, hurt as much but they help a lot more here in this situation and the horse just got carried by the bias and they melted up front um this horse won't get the same trip here it's a different style of field there's more contenders coming in shooting from different angles um this horse is going to be a toss for me and 40 to 1 would still be too short uh bring to the five tawny point this horse is is i don't know necessarily what to do with this horse it's, it's lightly raced um Two very nice wins, uh, one, in to, one to break its maiden and then in some nice allowance company on the synthetic at Turfway. They shipped it down for the Risen Star Fairgrounds. It didn't necessarily work out. Uh, I think Cox is, as I said before, the Cox trainees, he's looking for some sort of spot here. And the Risen Star, why Risen didn't work on at the Risen Star? Let's try Synth. Uh, Manny flies in from New York for the mount, but he has another couple mounts today, so I don't know if it's just particular to this horse. 
Although I'm not a fan, it's interesting to note the Speed Fingers continue to improve every single race. And if they continue on the same track that they're at right now, they, they put right there. They, they're right in that range uh, for the opportunity to win. So if runs a time form one away. We'll we'll see. I think this this horse has an opportunity. I'm not going to do it. I've been fading Cox horses for the road to the Derby the whole time. I'm gonna not going to stop today. This horse is going to be a fade for me. Um, that brings us to the six and the seven, Great Escape and Tis the Bomb. Uh, what do you think of these two runners? Yeah, the number six, Great Escape. So we got a Rudy Brissett horse coming in here who's also trying the synthetic for the first time. This horse has also never tried the turf. So it is a bit of a question mark here to see exactly how he's going to handle the surface. Uh, looking at the pedigree, I think there's reasons to be optimistic about the surface. However, I have some questions about the distance. To me, this horse seems to be more of a maybe a sprinter miler. I'm not sure he really wants to see out the nine furlongs at this point. That being said, I thought he ran a nice enough race last out at Oaklawn, going an optional 80. Uh, that was his first start off of a quite a long layoff by three-year-old standards, coming in off of about a five-month break. Uh, he showed good speed that day, and he actually was the best of the horses that were anywhere near the lead in a race that uh, came back to horses that were sitting farther off the pace. So I don't think that race is as bad as it looks. Uh, he did cough up a two-length lead, though, and you know essentially get beaten two and a half lengths to the ultimate winner. And the class of what he encountered in that race is not nearly as tough as what I'll find today. So this is a horse that I'm probably not going to bet because I'm not convinced he gets the distance. But if, if you think he just needed that race off the layoff and he's going to take a step forward, this is an interesting horse that I think you'll get a good price on. The public might just overlook. The number seven, Tis the Bomb. Uh, this is a horse that I've never been a huge fan of, and I'm not going to quit that today. <laughs> I think he's a very nice horse. He's a deserving favorite. He did get the win in the Bataglia Memorial Stakes last out, but boy, did he need every inch of ground and not one inch further because stolen base was coming late. Uh, he had a perfect trip this day to the bomb. I mean, he was a little bit wide, but that's never a bad place to be at Turfway. And I thought that he just wasn't as impressive as I'd want to see him be. I, I still think he gets over bet off of his Breeders' Cup finish. I guess you can call that a win. But uh, finish anyway in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. You know, I'm still not convinced he's as good as advertised. And while he certainly is going to be a major contender in this race, I'm just not sure that I want to take a short price on a horse that uh, really needed every inch of ground to hold off stolen base. And I don't think stolen base is necessarily a standout in this field either. So yeah, Tis the Bomb is a horse that I'll probably let beat me. Uh, and he very well minds. But given the short price, I think there's other alternatives I'd rather have. Speaking of which, uh, number eight is an interesting alternative here. Uh, where'd you go with him, Andrew? I mean, this I'm a little lost on this horse. Red Run joins an Asmussen trainee, joins the Derby Trail after a very nice win on Ladies' Day at Sam Houston Race Park. But that was 62 days ago, and that 62 day layoff, and this horse has done not too much since then. Asmussen does pretty well off the layoff, as most people know. He, he sort of can win from anything, but the horse has just been off for too long, and I haven't really seen much in the works. And uh, trying moving from turf to synth. I know it, it, it translates a lot of the time, but I'm not going to be a buyer here. I think that you the 6-1 to one is a little bit short for exactly what I'd be looking at. Um, it did have a nice uh, nice pop last time uh, in time form figs, but uh, I don't know if it's, this can hold up here. Uh, I think this horse is just a little bit too slow. Um, brings me to the 9, probably one of the most challenging names uh, I've ever had, Dowagandic Dow Chief. Um, I struggled with that one. I was thinking about that all day, trying to figure it out. Uh, this horse is interesting. Finished fourth behind Red Run and Stolen Bath, who both should be in this competitive field here. Uh, another turf horse on the trail, speed type. We'll have to work out from nine posts to clear all the way across. Um, I have, I find it very hard, even though the outside works pretty well at, at Turfway. It, that's a, a, a shorter shorter distance to the turn, and the horse is going to have to clear all the way from that nine post. I don't think the horse is going to... Um, had that opportunity, they'll have to work very hard and spend a lot of it energy that he can't get back just getting to that first turn. So this horse is going to be a toss for me. Um, but do note, it does have Graham up. So you have a trainer that's a, a jockey that's a, a jockey trainer combo that I believe is at 23% last time I checked. So there's definitely something there. Um, what did you think of the 10 and the 11? Yeah, I'm glad the pronunciation of that one landed to you and not me. So <laughs> the number 10, Optigogo. Uh, this is a horse that I think is up against it a little bit here. Um, he, he's got a couple of nice wins, I guess. The win at Tampa was impressive. Um, it, it didn't come back very fast, though, and that's kind of the problem. 
he does own a win over the synthetic. However, that came at Presque Isle, not here at Turfway. Uh, Presque Isle shippers haven't done amazingly so far at Turfway. I just think there is a bit of a class differential there that's been somewhat exposed. I think that Optigogo is a horse that I have a hard time getting behind. He he really appears to be more of a one-run closer. He just absolutely did not show up last out at Santa Anita in the Pasadena Stakes. Uh, he, he wasn't really expected to show up that day, given that they sent him off at 63-1. to one. And I'm not really sure why he's in here. Um, maybe just trying to pick up a check. Uh, who knows? But uh, this is a horse that uh, he's made – what, five starts now across four different tracks. This will be his fifth different track and six starts. And he really just hasn't seemed to, he doesn't have the consistency that I'm looking for. It doesn't seem to have the figures and just seems like an outsider to me. The number 11, Constitutional Lawyer. Uh, this is another horse that uh, seems to be up against it here. I think he's the longest price in the field at 50 to one. Uh, at 50 to one, I would put $2 on him, but <laughs> I don't think that, uh, I don't think he'll go off at 50 to one and I'm not really sure he has much of a realistic chance. Uh, he, he owned a nice win on January 2nd at Aqueduct. However, he did take advantage of a really strong rail that day. Uh, when he had the inside post, he set the speed and just kind of made them all and took them all the way around. I think he got really exposed in the withers when he tried to uh, go with early voting and just got you know absolutely embarrassed, just kind of had to jog in, uh, pretty much eased down the backstretch. So yeah, I think this is a horse that uh, is not in the right place. Speed has historically not been great at Turfway routes here. So I don't think, you know, given the run style and the post and everything else, I, I, this is not a horse that I'm interested in. All right, Andrew, why don't you uh, round us out with the last two runners, starting with uh, number 12, Black Adder. So before I, I go to there, I have to say I will have $2 on that horse because Jalen <laughs> is flying in for the mount. And that's a – I always like supporting these uh, – lower tier jockeys where they have the opportunities to race in bigger races like this and the excitement that they get and they get to fly in for something like this. So I will have a $2 win bet there just because I like backing those New York winter jockeys that, uh, that are out there at 31 degree uh, freezing rain and out there freezing their ass off with tons of gloves on just to get it done. So I'll have something there, but that brings me to the 12 and uh, a horse. I'm very interested in black adder switches barn to Baffert, but doesn't switch surfaces. Flies in from Golden Gate after winning the El Camino. Outside draw, again, is a little bit difficult, but at least this time the horse doesn't have to clear to uh, to clear to get the lead to win. It can win from pretty much anywhere. I think we see, I think we see if Bob pulls more tricks out of his hat here, and we are with a new trainer. But are, is it really who's been doing pulling the uh, the strings behind the puppet? Um, but I'm interested to see in this horse. I think there's an opportunity here for a horse from the way outside. If I had to pick a horse from the way outside, it's going to be this one. That brings me to the last one, the AE, number 13, Swing Shift. Um, this horse, I, from what I'm told, is just a Pletcher horse that was uh, vanned down with a couple other horses. It, it was on its it, – they were sending some horses down. They had the opportunity to come in from, from uh, Gulfstream Park, shipping them up. So they threw this horse in. Horse doesn't have anything really that – I would stand out and say, hey, this is one for me. But if the horse does draw in, it's going to be so far to the outside. Uh, uh, from its running style, I don't see the opportunity for it to get the lead. Um, so I'm, I'm going to pass on this horse as well. Which brings us to our top picks. Uh, what did you have as your top pick, Caleb? Yeah, so I ended up landing on number five, Tawny Port, a horse that you talked a little bit about. Um, it is a Brad Cox horse. I, I do agree with you. I don't think he's really found his derby horse yet. I'm not really convinced this is going to be his derby horse, but I think it could be his Jeff Ruby stakes horse. <laughs> so, but that being said, uh, I love a horse for course angle at Turfway. I think that it's a track that plays kind of quirky. It's a little bit unique in the way that, uh, you know, with the new surface just put down, you know, two years ago or whatever it was um, when CDI took over. But I think that a horse that has proven to like Turfway goes a long way. I think that this horse is, you know, he's undefeated at Turfway here, two for two. He should see the distance out with no problems. Uh, they started him going a route, so you have to think that there's uh, every bit of confidence he can get an extra you know, furlong here. And I don't think his risen star was all that bad. He got shuffled back a little bit in that race. Um, he, he lost some positioning. He, he didn't really get the cleanest of trips. But truthfully, I think that was just a really strong field. I mean, I think you take Epicenter, Smile Happy, Zandon, or Pioneer of Medina, the four horses that finished in front of him that day, and I think that you know, maybe surface notwithstanding, they would all be significant favorites in a race like this. So uh, I, I think that that's just a really strong race that maybe is flying under the radar a little bit, given that it was only a grade two. And if the fairground circuit, which isn't always 
thought of as having the toughest fields. But I thought that that was a strong race and he ran better than it looked that day. Um, you know, slow down Andy was in that race as well, who Tawny Port beat. He came back to win the Sunland Park Derby last week. So I think that uh, that's a stronger race than maybe meets the eye. I think that uh, Tawny Port gets a nice trip. He's not too far outside. He'll be probably mid-pack in this field. And uh, I just think this horse makes a lot of sense. Where did you end up, Andrew? I ended up with the same pick as a my pick of my long shot. And I know I'm going to get grief from you for this one. But I'm going to actually take one of the ex-Bob horses. I'm going to take back at her from the way outside. Switches barn. Um, it's my top pick. I hate to play one of these Bob horses. But the El Camino Real showed me something. I think this caliber field is a little bit stronger than that one. But – Getting that stalker trip from getting a stalker trip from that twelve post should not be an issue for me. Um, it doesn't have to be on the lead, so get inside a little bit, save a little bit of ground, and make that one run. And, and as long as you're from the get some position on the outside, and, and you have an opportunity to make up ground to Turfway for sure. Uh, it's a little tough to tell from the from the camera angles, but it's definitely possible. Um, I, I want to note on this too of the El Camino. At that time, you and I did a video and we talked about it. The uh, routes at Golden Gate were wire to wire 54.6% of the time. And this horse, it was a huge speed bias. And this horse came from off it to win that race. Uh, was at, was at first call was in, was six lengths off, five lengths off at second. Um, and then came up to hit by a neck. Uh, the horse just has the opportunity to make up ground. And this is a track where you can make up ground. And now it has the bias going for it. So Black Adder is going to be my long shot and my top pick. Did you have a long shot in this race? It's funny because uh, it's actually the long shot that I landed on. So I can't give you too much grief here. I, I can't decide if that's just a bad morning line at 15 to one, which I think it probably is. Um, or maybe we're just, you know, way off base here. But, uh, you know, for all the reasons you said, I mean, the horse ran a good race in the El Camino Real. Um, this is not a horse I want anything to do with in the Kentucky Derby. But in terms of this race here, I thought he made a lot of sense. Um, you know, he beat McKinnon in that El Camino Real, which you know, McKinnon just missed in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf to Tis the Bomb. I mean, he was only you know beaten a neck in that race. Uh, I thought, you know, like you said, he ran against the flow in that El Camino Real, and I thought Black Adder made a lot of sense. There was a lot of price horses here I think you could have taken a look at uh, in that 6-1 to one to 8-1 to one range. But I think in terms of double-digit prices, I don't think you'll get that on Black Adder. But if you do, I think it's a no-brainer that that's kind of got to be the long shot play. Yeah, I love it. I we're on the same one. We've had some good uh, some good hits so far on this road to the Derby. We're on the same horse, so I'm excited about it. So this coming Saturday, we have a phenomenal uh, field here. 13 horses, 12 with one also eligible, going one and one eighth of a mile on the Tapita at Turfway Park. Uh, 6.23 Eastern time is the time of the race, race number 12. So we have 6.23, 6.40, and 7.35 as our three Road to the Derby races this week. We ask you to like and subscribe so you can get our next couple videos. We have the last 100-point races coming up in the next two weeks. If you like and subscribe on YouTube, you'll get notifications every time one pops up. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next week.